It's Create Day. The first thing I want to do is make the eyes for the mummy rolling pin because I'm using air dry clay and that will need to dry. So I'm just using this half teaspoon um, to put the clay into because it kind of has the oval shape of an eye. Um, so I'm just going to press that in there and uh, trim off the excess and then I will be able to trim it up to make it look more like an, an eye and add that little plastic eyeball into the center of it. I dusted the teaspoon with cornstarch first so that made removal of the clay really easy and then I was able to just kind of smooth around the edges and place the eyeball in. So now I just trim and shape until I get the look that I want. This is where I'm just pressing up in the center of the clay and down on the ends. I want to get some curve in this so that it will fit nicely onto the rolling pin. As you can see, I had already painted the pin uh, with an acrylic white, but the cheesecloth I'm going to be using isn't a pure white, it's more of an off-white. So I decided to go over the rolling pin with the uh, linen color so that there wouldn't be a lot of contrast if the paint showed through the cheesecloth. And so once that was dry, I'm able to glue on the eyeballs using some Gorilla Glue with a dab of hot glue in the middle for the instant hold. Once the clay had dried overnight, I was able to go back in with that same color of linen and paint up around the clay and a little bit onto the whites of the eyeballs. And now I'm just adding some dark brown called espresso around the eyes. And I ended up adding some to the body also, uh, but it turned out that was completely unnecessary because the cheesecloth covered all of that. Painted the handles the same brown color, uh, but then changed my mind a couple of times by the time I was done. First mind change, do the dark chalk paint for better coverage on this handle. Well, it's time to start wrapping up our little mummy. 
I'm just I uh, had I cut pre-cut a bunch of strips of the cheese cloth. Um, they're probably about an inch and a half wide, and I wanted to have it big enough that I could kind of fold it over and manipulate it around this so that I could partially, like partially cover the eyes, and just I wanted a lot of. Um, ability to just kind of make it what I wanted it to look like and so that size seemed to work really well just tacking it down with hot glue and I just wrapped and wrapped until I was happy with it For rolling pin number two, I'm going to use these Halloween napkins. Um, you separate the back ply from the decorated top ply. And using my paintbrush dipped in water, I'm removing some of the border. I'm going to be using that. And then I want to rough up the edges around the little Happy Halloween part here so that uh, I can tear it, you know, and just make it look... Um, It'll just make it blend easier. I'm going to be painting into the black to try and uh, blend it all together. So I'm applying it to my um, rolling pin that I had already painted white and even though it's black you want to start with a base coat of white to decoupage this onto because if it's if you paint it black and decoupage this on the black will bleed through onto all those other colors and you won't have the vibrancy of those colors um, it'll make the ghosts look black and it just it, it just doesn't work so um, decoupage that on and then now I'm doing the little border around the top and bottom of the rolling pin. And then a coat of Mod Podge over all of it. So here's where I'm going in with the black acrylic paint starting up at that little border and just working my way down around onto uh, the black areas of the napkin. And then I just painted in the top and bottom of the rolling pin with that same black paint. Now it's time to make our little ghosts out of air dry clay. I'm applying the cornstarch into the ghost molds so that they will release easily. And we just take little pieces of this clay and press it down in there the best we can and remove the excess. Now I did have to use a toothpick and kind of finish removing the holes in the eyes on some of these. Um, this wasn't a real high quality mold, uh, but they, you know, they turned out okay. Just kind of needed to smooth the edges 
and make sure the eyes and mouth um, had the openings in them. Then I just glued them on with some tacky glue. So now our mummy is all wrapped up and it's time to seal all that with a coat of Mod Podge. He's way too clean so we need to take some of our dark brown paint and just do um, a light dry brushing over this cheesecloth. So here's my second mind change. I didn't like the brown handles. There was just too much brown. So I decided to go with a hunter green. And um, I wanted to add some like dirt splatters. So I, you know, I've never perfected this speckling technique. Um, I've tried different things and I've just never gotten it to turn out exactly how I want it to. But I got some little speckles on there, so I'm, yeah, whatever. Just wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. I wanted to make a little hanger for this, so I took a strip of the cheesecloth, folded it in half, and then pushed that through. And then I just pulled the other ends through that little loop and then did a triple knot down where I thought the um, hanging part should be the length of it and then just cut off the excess. I added some more of the dark brown espresso paint just to dirty that up to match the rest of the rolling pin. So now that the ghosts are all dry, I am just going in and giving them a good coat of the black acrylic paint. I'm using autumn orange acrylic paint for the handles and it did take about four coats um, so you know using chalk paint would probably be better and halfway through I thought I should have made my own chalk paint with this color but at that point I just figured it would be easier to just put on one last coat and call it good It's time to paint the ghost. So I'm actually starting with gray instead of white. I just thought it would be easier to um, kind of build up to that white to get better coverage with the paint. I don't know if it really made a difference or not, but that was what I was thinking at the time anyway. And you just need to be careful that you don't have it so much paint on your brush that it goes down into the eyes or the mouth of the ghosts. So you want to um, go, you know, with a light hand over this. And once that was dry, I was able to go ahead and do the white paint.
So now I'm applying a little bit of Mod Podge so that I can throw some purple glitter onto the background of like in between the ghosts. Kind of make it look like um, stars at night or something. I don't know. Uh, I just thought it would uh, be a fun addition to this little Halloween rolling pin. So I just make sure I only apply the Mod Podge where I want the glitter and I don't want it over the lettering or over the ghosts or anything else. I just want it on the black. So I just uh, sprinkle it on there and then kind of shake off the excess and wait for it to dry. And then I can go in and um, I brushed off the excess glitter with a with my paintbrush before I uh, start applying the final coat of Mod Podge over the entire rolling pin. And now for the hanger on this one, I'm using these two ribbons I picked up from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to hot glue them together um, so that it'll make it easier for me to insert them through the hole and keep them all together as one unit. So then I just tie it off in a knot like I did the other one. So now I want to add this little owl charm to the, I want it to hang down um, in the center of that hanger. So I threaded a piece of really thin ribbon on there. And I put it on just to see where it would hang. I wanted it to kind of be in the middle and figure out where I need to tie my knot. And then I can just tie that onto the knot of the hanger. So here I'm just checking and yeah, he's hanging the way I want him to. So I can go ahead and finish this up by um, tying that on and dovetailing the ribbon and then I tuck those little ends down with a little bit of hot glue uh, so they're not just sticking straight up. And with that we are done. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, I hope I've inspired you to go create something. See you next time.